Nicholas Mazzi, M-A-Z-Z-E-I. And your occupation, sir? I am a police officer with the City of Coral Springs Police Department. And do you have a rank at the present time? I am currently a captain. Okay. And how long have you been a police officer? 21 years. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Uh, did you have an occasion to respond to a location? Yes, I did. And where did you respond to? Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And where did you respond from? <clears throat> Uh, the City of Coral Springs Police Department. And where, where is that with reference to Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School? Uh, the exact mileage I do not know, but it is uh, down Coral Springs Drive, uh, a few miles away. Okay, just a few miles? Correct. Okay, and uh, did you approach a certain building? I did. In which building did you approach? I approached from the west side of the 1200 building. Okay. Uh, I'd like to, did, when you approached the building, did you observe anything? I did. What did you observe? Uh, I observed um, officers were on scene already, and then uh, as we moved closer to the building, I observed a body lying on the ground outside of the west doors. Okay. Let me show you now. States Exhibit 5F and States Exhibit 73. If you pull that down to the captain and look at it, of course. Um, do you recognize uh, those exhibits? I do. Okay. And uh, are they one and the same individual? Yes, they are. And does state, state's exhibit, excuse me for a second. No worries. Uh, state's exhibit uh, 7B, does that accurately depict the individual lying by the west uh, stairwell door? Yes, it does. As it existed on February the 14th, 2018? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer 7B. 7B? Okay. I thought you said 7B3. So I, I think the other two. I heard 5F and. Yeah, this is 5F. I want to introduce 5F. And mm -hmm. I can't read. Uh... <laughs> That's right, Paul. Give me the... This is 7B. 5F and 7B. B. Yeah. Is there any objection? I, I, I'm just not sure what 5F is. Yeah, I'll just give it to you. Oh, it's okay. The defense is objecting to the admission of this photograph depicting a uh, body uh, on the grounds at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. They're in a sidebar, and as we watch them uh, in their sidebar, you notice they're using their microphones and their headphones. Again, if you haven't been watching this week, it's a way to um, move things along a little bit. There's so many attorneys, everybody can't get up and huddle around the judge's bench. Uh, so that's what uh, we see um, instead, is that everybody puts on their headphones and communicates. Uh, Kira Lynn Abernathy is uh, still with us. And um, uh, Kira, this, um, the defense has said, um, oh, I understand the sidebar is broken up. We'll get you on the backside here. Kira, let's go back in the court. And states, Seven B as in boy for identification will be received as states 105. I'm, not, I'm going to show you now uh, 
States Exhibit 105 that has been introduced and ask you if you can see that. Yes, I can. Okay. And is that, uh, do you know who that is? I do. Who is that? That is Aaron Feiss. Okay. And is that the way uh, you saw him when you approached the western uh, portion of uh, the 1200 building? Yes, it is. Okay. And showing you States Exhibit 104. Who is that? That is Aaron Feiss. Okay. So once you saw Mr. Feist, what did you do? I checked him for vitals, um, realized that he was deceased, believed that there was still a shooter inside the building, and we made entry into the building. Okay. And how did you get into the building? Captain? We went through the western doors. Okay. Let me show you States Exhibit 100. It's already been introduced in evidence. And States Exhibit 24E. So take a look at that. And States Exhibit 24E. Do you recognize States 24E? I do. Okay. And how do you recognize it? This is a photograph of me uh, making contact with a victim right inside the west doors. Okay. And this is a photograph of that same victim. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer 24E. <laughs> Hey, you see the uh, headphones back on, another sidebar. Um, Kira, the, the defense is objecting to pretty much every piece of evidence that is being admitted, um, and, and that's part of the landscape, is it not, in a death case? Yes, definitely. I mean, they have to make sure that everything that's being admitted is, you know, goes towards the furtherance of this penalty phase specifically. And if they have an issue with it, they have to raise it now, otherwise they lose it. Um, so they're doing everything they can to say, uh, hey, you know, not okay with us, and this is why. And then, of course, the judge makes the decision from there. And her decision is always the same. It's coming in. <laughs> Headphones right. are off. Oh, nope, now they're back on. They're, uh, and, and, you know, this, it, at some levels, the defense is expecting their uh, motions to be denied, um, but, or their objections, but the, the more that comes in, the more validity they have um, with their argument that it becomes piling on and becomes prejudicial. Now you see their headphones are off, they're back, let's go back in. 106. Captain, I'm uh, show you State's Exhibit. Now it's introduced in evidence 106. Uh, can you see that okay? I can. Okay, and wh who is in that photograph? That is me talking to Christopher Hickson. Okay. And that's when you, <coughs> at what point is this? This is upon our initial entry through the west side doors. Okay. I'm showing you. States Exhibit Mark 100. Who is that? That is Christopher Hickson. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Your Honor, thank you. I have no further questions. Of the Captain. No, no question? No. Okay. Thank you, Captain. You're excused. Thank you. Sergeant Vanderees. All right, first witness of the day in the books as the captain makes his way out of the courtroom. We are expecting um, more witness testimony from students uh, throughout the day today. Our team on the ground says uh, that um, there will be also likely some very difficult testimony and photographs. Uh, we obviously can't show those photographs and won't show those photographs on court tv um, but there was one there of a dead body and apparently there are more to come today so a difficult friday for this jury ahead carolyn um abernathy the the arduous task that this jury has been given um 
is it's, it's tough to really get your head around. You have to decide the fate of another human being and be exposed to all of this gory, uh, difficult material. Yes, it's definitely difficult and they have a hard road ahead of them, but I think that they're um, both sides are presenting the case in a way to let them make the best decision they can. You know, the state right now putting forth all the facts, everything that they think shows the aggravating factors, you know, everything to say yes, death penalty. And then, of course, we'll see what the defense does to make sure they say no death penalty. Yeah, and the, the second part of this equation is going to be all about Nicholas Cruz, and uh, we're bumping up against the top of the hour here. So um, what we're going to do is push pause. We're going to pick it up um, on the backside of this commercial break with the next witness. You saw that individual, another member of law enforcement, will be the uh, next witness for the state of Florida. And um, again, this is going to be a difficult day for the jury and for those family members who have been here day after day in this courtroom and this is only day five this trial is expected to last months months of uh, testimony this is the first part of it the second part will be all about nicholas cruz this part is about what nicholas cruz did well again we'll take a break here and get you back into the courtroom right after this uh, this is court tv your front row seat to justice stay with us be right back Go to prettylitter.com. Top of the hour. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ted Rollins. Glad to round out another week with you. We have been watching testimony this morning of the Parkland School shooting massacre. This is the penalty phase. Court started about an hour or about a half hour ago, and the state has just called their next witness. When we went to break, we saw him walking to the podium. His name is Richard Vanderreems, and he is with the Broward County Sheriff's Department. Let's pick it up right where he begins his testimony. Good afternoon, sir. Please, you've already got your hand raised. So, uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Can go ahead and be seated. And when you're seated, if you would please state your full name and spell your last name. Richard Vanderings, uh, V A N D E R E E M S. And your occupation, sir? I'm a sergeant with the Broward Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been a Law enforcement officer. 23 years. How long have you been with the Broward Sheriff's Office? 23 years. I'd like to call your attention uh, to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Were you on duty on that occasion? Yes, I was. Uh, did you have an occasion on that date to respond to a certain location? Yes, I did. Where did you respond to? I was a uh, officer or a deputy in the city of Deerfield Beach. Uh, I was on power line between 10th Street and Hillsborough Boulevard at the time. Okay. And what did you do? The call came out across our air in reference to uh, a possible shooting at the high school. Uh, I ran code three uh, down power line up to Sawgrass Expressway. What's code three? I'm sorry. I went lights and sirens um, to uh, the school. Okay. And when you arrived into campus, did you were you going to a certain building on the campus? Yes, um, I was going to the freshman building, 12. 1200 building? Yes. Okay. Uh, so when you approached the 1200 building, which, how did you approach it? From which, the west, east, how did you approach it? I got off of Coral Ridge Drive. I went the back way through, which is uh, down around the Walmart. There's a little curve through West Glades. So I got on Hamburg, went eastbound on Hamburg. Um, I ended up having to go wrong way traffic because the road was blocked. Uh, I parked um, in the center medium area and then I got out and I uh, ran through the open gate to the east side of building 12. Okay, and did you, which uh, entrance to building 12 did you approach? I approached the east side building, uh, east door. Okay, the double doors? Yes. And did you enter the double doors? Yes, I did. Okay, did, uh, and when you entered, what did you do? Uh, when I went in, I um, I originally went through the front doors. I observed a um, a child uh, dead on the ground on the left, and there was like uh, smoke and dust in the air. And I observed uh, other officers uh, a little bit further ahead. Um, I checked one room on the left-hand side, and then I went up to uh, the front 
of uh, the officers that were there. They were clearing the kids out of the rooms. Um, and uh, myself and another officer went towards the front to uh, kind of keep them covered as they were pulling kids out. And we were pushing down the hallway. Okay. And did you eventually uh, go up the stairs? Yes, I, I went up to the, um, the third floor uh, where uh, three other officers were at. Um, and at that time, we, uh, we looked down the hallway, and there was a um, child all the way at the uh, very end. Uh, he was kind of like trying to raise his hand up, um, and he was trying to say something, but he kept trying to raise his hand up so we, we could see that he was alive. And did you uh, go to his aid? Yeah, the, um, myself, um, Deputy Schmidt, Deputy Alvin, Deputy um, Hod Hodson. Are they deputies? Or I'm they sorry, officers. Okay. Um, Officer Hodson, Officer Alvin, and Officer Schmidt. Okay. Uh, we went down. Uh, we grabbed him, and we uh, drug him all the way back to the west side um, stairwell where one of the medics had just came up and started to work on him. Okay. And do you know that individual's name? No, I do not. Know the medic's name. Okay. All right. Let me show you. Uh, and did you eventually go on to the third floor? Yeah, that whole time I was on the third floor because I started on the um, west side uh, stairwell on the third floor, and we went all the way down to the east side, grabbed Anthony, and we brought him all the way back to uh, the west side. Okay. So you said Anthony. I thought you said you didn't know his name. Oh, the, the victim. I know, yeah, Anthony uh, Bor Borges. I uh, thought you meant the medic. I didn't know his I name. Know, I'm, hey, I'm sorry. You ask a lot of questions. You get all, everybody confused. Okay. Right. That's what I was asking you. The, per the, the student that you helped. Yeah, that Anthony. was Anthony. Anthony Borges. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, so let me show you. We On the third floor, did you, uh, were your body, was your body camera working? Yes. Okay. Let me show you state's exhibit. 7C for identification, a deputy. Here, take a look at that. Do you recognize that? Yes. And is that from your body camera? Yes. And does it accurately and truly depict the scene on February the 14th, 2018, as you pass the men's restroom? Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer a State's Exhibit 7C. Is there any objection? We just incorporate, renew all the objections in DMIL 12, please. Okay, over the defense objection, states <coughs> exhibit 7C for identification will be received as states 107. Will this be published just to the jurors and the lawyers? Yeah, we, and yeah just for the, okay. the jurors and okay. uh, we told the end. Oh, you already, I just, I didn't know that. Great, thank you. So nothing's supposed to be today uh, shown. To the public? Yes. Okay. You know that. Thanks. Okay, now I'm showing you State's Exhibit uh, Mark 107. Deputy Vanderings, did you see that? Yes. And uh, is that the way you saw the, that individual in the men's restroom alcove? Yes. Okay. And that was after we drugged Anthony back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I want to show you now um, State's Exhibit for Identification 7F. I ask you to pull down. Yes. Is that an accurate and true uh, depiction of a photograph from your body cam that existed on February the 14th, 2018? Yes. And does it accurately uh, show two people in alcove in front of 1249? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit uh, 7F. Is there any objection? We object pursuant to DMIL 12, please. Okay. Over the defense objections, states exhibit 7F 
for identification will be received as states 108. show you now uh, that photograph it's one one oh eight uh, does uh, that truly and accurately depict those two individuals yes and do you know who those two individuals are yes who are they Kara is the one with the white shirt and the blue stripe and Meadow is the uh, one with the blue jeans gray top and the little pink back backpack okay. or Pink, pink, pink backpack. Sorry. Okay. I'd like to show you uh, State Exhibit uh, 5J. Do <coughs> you recognize who that is? Kara. Okay, is that Kara Logger? Yes, Kara okay. Logger. And State's Exhibit 5N? Meadow. Meadow Pollock? Yes. The two, uh, two girls that you just identified in State's Exhibit 108? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer now State's Exhibit 5J and 5A. Thank you. Okay, defense, is there any objection? All right, we're going to uh, take a break here. And uh, as you see, they're about to go to a sidebar. Yep, they're putting the headphones on. Uh, we'll take a break here and get you back into the courtroom right after this. America's Valued Destination. Welcome back to uh, Court TV and our continuing coverage of the state of Florida versus Nicholas Cruz. When we went to break, we were in a sidebar. Um, the sidebar broke up. Richard Vander Eames um, left the stand, and uh, now another witness has just taken the stand for the state of Florida. Let's go in and see who's next. Good morning. Good morning. And your occupation, sir? I am a detective with the Coral Springs Police Department. Okay. And how long have you been a police officer? Uh, about 17 years. Okay. Um, had all been with the Coral Springs Police Department? No, sir. I was also a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation for one year in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And all the rest with Coral Springs? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like to call your attention uh, to um, Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Did you have occasion to respond to a certain location? I did. And where did you respond to? I responded to Building 1 of the Stoneman Douglas School at about 2.42 p.m. Okay. And what, where is that building? Uh, it's on the southeast side of the campus. Okay. Did you eventually get to the 1200 building? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you go from the 100, the number one building, the administration building, to the 1200 building? Yes, I did. How did you proceed from, the, from Building 1 to 12? I walked with another detective uh, to the northeast side of the campus to Building 12. Okay. And did you enter Building 12? I did. And what entrance did you enter? On the east side of the building, okay. on the first floor. Okay. And uh, 
did you how did you proceed in the, on the first floor? Did you? Uh, I met up with uh, our captain Mock at the time, and he directed me to continue down to the west side of the building to the uh, second floor uh, stairwell. Okay. And did you go up the stairwell? I did. And where did you go? I was there for a short period of time, and then went to the third floor stairwell. Okay. Were you the first <coughs> officer up on the third? Floor? I believe so. I was with two other officers, but it was pretty close to the first up there. Who were you with? Uh, Officer Schmidt and Officer Hodgson. Okay. And did uh, off, uh, Deputy Van Der Reens ever join you? I believe so. I may have spoken to him on the second floor right. before I was up there. Okay. And then what did you, when you, let me show you State's Exhibit Mark 6Y and ask you if you can identify this. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Does this accurately and truly depict you? going up to the third floor? It does. And who, who else is in there? Uh, Officer Hodgson, Detective Hodgson, is on the right in the front there, and then I believe it's Officer Schmidt on the left. Okay, Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 6Y. Is there an objection? No, ma'am. Okay, State's Exhibit 6Y for identification will be received as State's 111. Detective Dolphin showing you uh, State's Exhibit 111. Can you see that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Where are you? I am the bottom right of the three officers there. Okay. And who are the other two officers? Officer Hodgson is on the top right without a helmet, and Officer Schmidt is on the left with a helmet. Okay. And this is the third floor landing on the west side? Correct. Okay. And uh, what's on the landing? Uh, in front of us, there is a vest and a rifle on top of it, and on the right is uh, Jamie Gutenberg. Okay. And let me show you now State's Exhibit Mark 6Z. Yes, sir. <coughs> what does that depict? It shows me checking for vital signs on Jamie Gutenberg and the other officers covering the doors. Okay. Does that, that uh, 6Z truly and accurately depict you? Checking the vital signs on Ms. Gutenberg? It does. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer 6Z. Is there any objection? Just cumulative under 403. So you're renewing your. your yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, so noted. Uh, over the defense uh, continued objection, 6Z for identification will be received as states 112. Alton, showing you one, State's Exhibit 112. Where are you? I am over Jamie Gutenberg. Okay. And uh, what happened? You checked her? Any vital signs? Yes, I checked her vital signs for breath and for pulse. I found none. Um, and uh, I checked several times. Okay. And then uh, we held there for a moment, and uh, Officer Schmidt and I heard a voice, we thought, coming from the hallway. Okay. Then what did you guys do? Uh, we cracked the door, uh, confirmed that somebody in the hallway was asking for help, and we decided we were going to move into the hallway to go get them. Okay. And did you do that? Yes, we did. And who did you go with? Uh, I know I was in the front, so I didn't see who was with me behind, but I believe Officer uh, Schmidt and uh, Detective Hodgson, I'm sorry, uh, was also with us. Uh, whoever was behind them, I'm not sure, okay. but we pushed into the hallway. All right, and did you see uh, Deputy Vanderings up on the third floor? Uh, I did not see him there. I know that he had been there, but he was behind me. Okay, so tell us what you did. Uh, we moved into the hallway and walked towards uh, the voice, which turned out to be Anthony Borges, made contact with him. Um, I was still looking down the hallway, covering in case we encountered uh, a subject, and the officers uh, dragged him back to get him into the hallway to provide medical care. Okay. And then what did you do? I uh, then stayed in the hallway and assisted with uh, clearing the rest of that floor. Okay. Let me uh, show you now State's Exhibit Mark 107 that's been introduced into evidence. And do you recognize that? Yes. Okay. And uh, what did you do? Uh, while we were clearing the various rooms on this floor, uh, one of the bathroom doors had a young man laid up against it who was deceased, Joaquin Oliver. 
Um, I had to uh, remove him from the door so that it could be checked to ensure nobody was inside of it. Okay. And I'm going to show you now states in every 5L for identification. And ask you if you can identify who that is. Yes, it's Joaquin Oliver. Okay. And this is the, the person you dragged out of the, out of the men's room now? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer 5L. Thank you. Okay, defense, is there any objection to 5L for identification being received into evidence? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll hear the objection sidebar. All right, sidebar time. Headphones on as the defense makes another objection, part of the landscape here. Carolyn Abernathy is watching along with us. Uh, she is a defense attorney based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Kira, one of the things that um, is just so compelling and so heartbreaking is the play-by-play -play that each one of these witnesses brings to the testimony, to their specific testimony. In this case, it's law enforcement. We had students before, all the different perspectives. Um, and this witness in particular, uh, talking about the juggling of trying to save students that uh, need help, they still think that there's an active shooter. Nicholas Cruz, we know, has now blended in with the students. He's on his way out in the fire drill. But um, it is so compelling uh, that, uh, that one would think that jurors just, you know, they've got a really, really good idea now after one week of what happened here. Definitely, and I think the state's doing their job in presenting that because there wasn't the, the guilt portion. You know, he pled to this. The, the jurors need to see and know and feel and really get an impact, not just of what happened, when it happened, but right after when it happened and how it's impacted the community, how it's impacted these people's lives. Um, I mean, as we could see the family in the gallery, I mean, that's just, it once again is heart wrenching that they have to relive this. And yet at the same time, it is so important and necessary for all parties involved that this happen. And I, I think the state is doing a very good job of presenting their case in a way to have the jury and, you know, be there and understand um, what this has done and the impact of it on everybody. They are still uh, at a sidebar with the headphones on, so let's do this. We'll get a break in and get you into the courtroom right after this. 15% off your purchase. Welcome back. We have been watching testimony this morning in the penalty phase for Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. The then 19-year-old fatally shot 17 people at his former high school back in February of 2018. It is one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. Cruz pled guilty to first-degree murder for the deaths back in October, and he addressed the victim family members in a statement. Now it's up to a jury to decide whether he should spend the rest of his life in prison or be recommended for Florida's death row. Right now on the stand, Detective David Alfin from the Coral Springs Police Department. The sidebar just broke up. Let's go in. Over the defense objection, States Exhibit 5L for identification will be received as States 113. So, um, Detective Alvin, I'm going to show you 5G. You know who that photograph depicts? Jamie Gutenberg. Okay. And I'm going to show you 5R. You know who that photograph depicts? Peter Wang. Okay. Now, you mentioned where you, you saw Jamie Gutenberg yes. on the third floor landing and you checked her pulse. Yes, sir. Uh, with reference to Peter Wang, did you see him there? I did. When uh, I peeked out before entering that hallway, I saw him in the corner, in the uh, deep west corner, slumped down uh, on the ground there. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like now to offer states to you that 5G and 5R. Okay. So to the same objection, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, your objection is noted. Over the defense objection, states 5G will be received as states 114, and states 5R will be received as states 115. 
Your Honor, I have no further questions of Detective Alfred. Thank you, Detective. Thank you. Do you have any questions for this witness? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. State, you're not publishing these at this time? I was going to work. It's, a, it's your case. I just want to make sure I didn't interrupt you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to take a 15-minute recess. And um, please do not discuss the case uh, among one another. Please leave your notepads on your chairs. And we'll see you back in a, in a few minutes. All right, mid-morning break there for the jury after the officer, a series of law enforcement members took the stand today to take a look at Nicholas Cruz standing as the jury leaves the courtroom for this break. We are expecting um, them to be back in about 15 minutes. Kirlyn Abernathy is with us watching along in Atlanta. Uh, you take a look at uh, Nicholas Cruz there, um, Kira, the defense has a motion. They want the judge to read an instruction to this jury. She denied it. Uh, basically informing the jury that he is under the influence of, of drugs, of psychotropic medication. And they want the jury to be instructed that they cannot use any observing, uh, any observations they have of him and his behavior, his mannerisms. He, you know, at times he has his head down, other times he um, is acting a little quirky. The judge said no, and they're not reading it. What's your take on that, uh, on the, the motion and the ruling? Because let's face it, the jury, they're listening and watching the witnesses, but they're also keeping a very close eye on this defendant. I mean, I think you've definitely got to make the motion, right? As a defense attorney, knowing that your client is on these, you know, substances, which um, hopefully are helping him, and that's that's the point of them. Um, in terms of like the jury being able to use that as an instruction, that's really, what's the word? It's it's really solid, right? Like this is an instruction. You are not allowed to use this. And so, you know, what what if they do use it and it's not? Pre it's actually helps him. What if they do use their observations? You know, I, I don't know if that means that they're kept from even knowing what he's on. I, I, I'm not sure if that's necessarily clear, but you know, the, the judge is saying, you know, we're not going to command them that you cannot use this against him. And and I think she's right. I mean, if he has to have these these substances in order to to maintain composure, in order to be present, I mean, maybe this is even better for him that that what they're seeing, the Nicholas Cruz are seeing, you know, quote unquote under the influence of these substances. You know, hopefully they're helping him. It might even be better. So I think, as some terms of like an instruction judge I mean, she has that call to make and yeah i don't know how harmful that would be to him otherwise yeah i mean you could argue that uh, you know you look at him here with his thumbs in his ears um not wanting to listen and um that his behavior the 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 otter it is it might help him at the end of the day if if you're gonna hook a juror because you only need one juror to think that um he is suffering from a mental illness that prevents them feeling comfortable with recommending a sentence of death. So um, your point well taken. It, it, it's, not, it's very unclear which way it goes if he's acting a little odd, uh, if that helps or hurts him. Um, but again, in this scenario, months of this, there's going to be months of observation for these jurors. And one would argue that the long, that the, the length of this trial, which is expected to be in excess uh, of a month, uh, two months, that's going to help him at the end of the day because jurors will be in the same room with him for that extended period of time and one or more, or you only need one juror to say, I'm not comfortable with this and it's over. Right, so I mean, it's it's not like a, a, a normal trial trial where the other jurors try to uh, convince that one to come over to their side. They'll be instructed that if someone has reservations, deliberations over, goodbye. He's uh, going to be there'll be a recommendation of um, life without parole. Yeah, that's correct. I think, in, like you said, in this case, I mean, you have to have it going for months just to explain what happened, just to explain, you know, like, like we're expecting with the defense when they put up their case is going to be extensive and, all, you know, 
the defendant's life under a microscope, basically, which they have to do. And so having the jury there and inter interacting in the you know the way that they can of observing and seeing and you know these behaviors of of Nicholas Cruz, I definitely I think that does go towards the this is a person, you know, this is what he did, this is the effects that he did. Yes, he took other people's lives. This is a person still, and we're looking at a person. What are we as jurors going to feel comfortable with our community and our own decisions to do? So I do believe that that goes in his favor.